dishonest decision. Court rules the Texas courtroom may continue to open with prayers. On September 29th, an appeals court in Louisiana allowed a judge to lead a prayer in his public courtroom, overturning, excuse me, overturning last year's verdict from a district court in Texas. According to the original lawsuit filed in May 2021, um, Attorney Joe Rowe, John Rowe, which is a pseudonym, contacted the Freedom From Religion Foundation with complaints about the court's behavior. Rowe mentioned that each day started with an overview of the court's chaplaincy program, wherein an assigned chaplain, who was usually Protestant, delivered a prayer of their choosing, which Judge Mack invited everyone to stand up for. In response to a letter from FFRF, Judge Mack installed signs outside in a television in the back of the courtroom, notifying uh, that people are not allowed, not required to be present or participate in the brief opening ceremony that includes an invocation by a volunteer chaplain pledging to the United States and the Texas state flag. On May 29, 2019, FFRF and Roe sued the judge in both his individual and official judiciary cap capacity on behalf of the state of Texas. However, in this most recent appeal, a three-judge panel ruled two to one to overturn that decision, allowing prayer to continue in the Texas courtroom. So let me um I will I will I will, I will give the overview. So just go through the timeline of events again. So in Texas, there was this judge, Judge Mack, and he used to have ceremonies where he would open his courtroom every day with prayer, including having a volunteer chaplain come in and give this prayer. And there was an attorney that would work in that courtroom who had a problem with this, and he contacted the, the Freedom From Religion Foundation. FFRF wrote a letter to Judge Mack basically being like, you are infringing upon these rights. This is a violation of our constitution. They outlined their case. In response to that letter, Judge Mack decided to make this voluntary, voluntary participation and saying, okay, we are going to continue to do our prayer ceremonies, but I'll just make them voluntary. So if you don't wanna be here while we do our prayer ceremony in our public courtroom, you can just step outside the hall and then wait until we'll, we're done and a bailiff will come get you or something. And so basically he continued and then FFRF and this attorney that first contacted them decided to sue Judge Mack, both within the position of his job and then also just as an individual. And originally the FFRF won a decision in the former court that they were battling this in where the court said no he's not allowed to do this this violates these statutes blah 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 it went to appeals an appeals court in louisiana said that no he can continue that this doesn't violate anything that it's voluntary and that it's totally fine to continue even though the the three judge panel was presented with a wealth of information of people who felt that because they voluntarily chose to leave the ceremonies that the judge would not look favorably favorably upon them that they believe that their their lack of participation in his prayer ceremonies was affecting their his behavior towards them and um that he was no longer being impartial because of their unwillingness to participate in his, in his prayer ceremonies. Um, despite all of this, the, th the three judge panel, two out of the three said that, no, this is that he can continue. They didn't just think that that was substantial enough evidence. And um, they overturned the decision that the freedom from religion foundation had previously won. Um, wait, can they appeal this? Because it's, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so this was an appeals court in Louisiana. I think they should be able to appeal. I'm no lawyer, but they, I mean, I because think this would set the president, like, the understand, like in a classroom, for example, 
you cannot have a class prayer in school because the students will feel like if they are not Christian, if they don't participate in the prayer, they feel like they're being called out or feel out of place, right? But if you if you tell them like, okay, fine, the students who don't want to pray just stay outside, that's going to even be worse. They're like, you are not. You're basically signaling to them that you are different from every other student that is taking part in the prayer, and this is as bad as that is in a classroom. This is even worse in a court with really significant consequences. Like if the judge does not look favorably on me, like the judge is going to, this judge is going to make decisions that is going to influence my life and he's going to notice that I didn't want to come to the prayer. So like, obviously. Or that if the lawyers the don't participate, it could reflect poorly upon that lawyer's client. So they talked about how they felt coerced to continue right. to participate, even though they don't the want heck? to. How for the is this sake of the, the, the case that they're representing. How is this going? How is this allowed in the U.S.? Like, obviously, you, the pe the way people are going to behave is going to have an effect on their decisions, like how Christian you are. Especially because this judge ran on a platform. Because it it depends on what state you're in and what county and all this stuff. But in some states and counties, judges actually run for elections. Um, and this guy ran on a platform of bringing prayer back into the courtroom. Wait, actually, I, I take my, I take it back. D is right. D is like, if this goes to the Supreme Court, we're screwed. Yeah, this is not a good time to appeal things. Actually, <laughs> maybe this is why they're getting, this is why they're getting a lot bolder on the lower level because they know that if you appeal it, they might actually get like favorable outcome for the entire goddamn country. I know it's so. This is a bad time to be the Freedom from Religion Foundation, eh? It's so depressing. I mean. I don't know. Because then what what are our where are the protective mechanisms? What is our opportunity for redress? If yeah. the highest decision maker in the nation is substantially influenced against the standards of secularism that we hold dear and valuable, then Come what are methods and of I know, but I care about my country, and it matters a lot more because the the precedents of what happens in hey, the United States mean? become the precedents oh. that influence the rest of the world. You saying your matter, we, your country matters more than my country? How dare you? Yes, obviously. Okay, <laughs> okay fine. You're right. You know, you know that when America sneezes, the world catches a cold. Especially yes. when it comes to people who fight for global secularism like we do, the standards that are established in America are what are pointed back to by people in other countries. So if our standards in America are crumbling and we're trying to go to an, a support our communities in another nation in their fight for the strengthening of secularism in their, their you know, society, the opposition to that is going to say, well, you know, oh, you hold up all these examples, blah, blah, blah. But look, look in the U.S., they actually don't agree with you. Look in the U.S., they actually, you know, don't think that. It's like how when we talk about free speech and then people bring up the example of, you know, disrespecting the flag in France isn't allowed. The big H denial isn't allowed in France. And so they point out these areas of hypocrisy as reasons why it's totally valid for them to want to you know, ban any blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad instead of being like, you know what? Actually, when it comes to the disrespect to the flag or the national anthem, or whatever, that is that isn't consistent. We should work towards changing that to no longer be a standard. Instead, they say, no, this is this is why we should be allowed to continue or even further our domination. So do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this um, comment from D is important. D is saying, before he took the bench, Judge Mack was a Pentecostal minister and ran for office on a platform of opening his courtroom with prayers every day and involve improving access to chaplains in the judicial system. Like, this is so insidious. I, like, don't even...
Um, oh, yeah, and Dee is also highlighting the fact that the people who leave the courtroom have to do so in the full view of the judge. So if they do decide to leave, like, he is going, there's no way that you can do it discreetly and he won't notice. Like, he will be watching you turn around and walk out the entire time. Young Atheist is saying, in Pakistan, government of Pakistan forced students to study and learn the Quran. And in my college, teachers, and in my college, teachers teach us in class about jihad openly. It's like torture for me. The Islamization of education in Pakistan is so severe. And Imran Khan did a lot to bolster that. It makes me so angry just for cheap political points. He, the Quran is now mandatory for people that aren't even Muslim now studying it in public schools. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. This comment is very good by PK. And PK saying, but, but, but Hillary is worse than Trump. Yeah, or they're, no, no, the worst is that, or they're all the same. They're all the same. Look, Yo, at, look at your, it's look at your super. It's people that say that the most too. Yeah. You know who loves Bur it? The burn, the burn your buster people. Yeah, they yeah, did or, this. or militant leftists, communists, socialists. Yeah. They did this. They did this to your country. So imagine the, the fact that the leftist people are the are responsible for women's rights being challenged right now and the wall of separation between church and state be crumbling. Like it's so like the left who's supposed to protect these things are now responsible for actually all of this happening. Yeah, but we shot ourselves in the own, our own foot because we're too obsessed with ideological and moral purity. Purity, yeah. Group mentality. That we we don't actually care enough about these issues to get organized. We'd rather bicker over who is the perfect ally, blah, blah, blah. Like this is one of the reasons why I've been so freaking angry this past week. Yeah. When I was saying earlier in the show that I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting black -pilled. I can't deal with this. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Something I don't remember in response to you saying when Americans see sneeze and the world catches the cold, like the America sneeze today. <laughs> oh, by the way, Rich is uh, first time watching us. Thank you for being here. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoy the show. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.